Hey, what is going on you guys? Darren here. We are back with another Halifax Buccaneers franchise mode. We are in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs going up against the Carolina Hurricanes who have a terrifying regular season record, I gotta tell you. So, uh, because Carolina is the home team, we're going to PNC. Um, we are going to just very slowly simulate games one and two, and then we will jump into three and four and see how those treat us. We're on the power play early. Okay, we are, oh, there we go. Ryan Dezingle gets one really early for us, and they're on the power play now. Don't, yeah, okay, I was going to say, don't give them one back. Don't give them anything easy. Another penalty we took, but we killed it off. That's good, but it's like, oh my God. You guys can't just keep taking penalties, right? So that is going to do it pretty much. There we go. That is going to do it for the first period. It was a power play goal by Ryan Dezingle on Jacob Markstrom. So we outshot them 12 to 10 in the first. Let's see how the second period treats us and see if we can get the same kind of luck. And we took another penalty. This is ridiculous. Like, oh, Ryan Dezingle again. Is he going to be the hero here in, in round two? He already has the only two goals for us in round two. And we're halfway through the game and we're still up to nothing. So Anti Ranta is holding pretty strong in that net. Let's just see. Uh, I'm just I'm just really hoping he can really shut them down. Our defense. Look at the shots for and look at the shots against. It seems like our defense is really doing a good job of shutting down the Carolina Hurricanes, and especially in Carolina, the best you can hope for is a split. Let's go to the third period. I don't got to tell. Oh, and another penalty. Come on. And yeah, now they're going to get a goal. It's two to one and they're going to tie it because now Ranta got beat, which means his confidence is shaken. And now he's just going to let in a thousand, right? He just let in three goals on like four shots. That is ridiculous. Tie it up, boys. Come on. Late in the third, late in the third. Come on. Uh, oh my God. Mike Hoffman just tied the game late in the third period. <laughs> Holy crap, there was a minute four left in the third period and Hoffman ties it. Oh, this is getting intense. That was a terrible third period for us. It was actually, it was more like a really terrible four and a half-ish minutes. Okay, here we go. Overtime number one, go. All right, we're off to a good start. We're getting the shots on goal really early. Oh my God, I think Carolina. Yeah, Sebastian Ajo. Why was Corpusalo in the net in overtime? What is happening here? Oh my goodness. Why is Corpusalo in the net suddenly? I don't like that at all. Anyway, we dropped game one. We were up three, or we were up uh, two to nothing for most of the game. And then, yeah, oh, what a bad third. And I'm just, I'm really, really hoping that Anti Ranta is not injured. It doesn't appear that Anti Ranta is injured. Mike Hoffman is having a fantastic playoffs. We are down 1 0. Ethan Bryant's Chicago Blackhawks are up on the Dallas Stars 1 0. The Leafs are up on the Bruins 1 0. But we are losing 1 0 in this series. Ah, uh, let's get through game two with the real-time simulation. Oh, boys, I don't want to. I don't want to drop two in a row. I re okay. Gustav Forsling's gonna get one. I really don't want to drop two games in a row here. Not in the second round, and I, I really want to. This is a long power play. Oh my god, they were. It seemed like they were just on the power play for like. And Michael Backlund gets it tied up at the end of the first. It really seemed like they were on the power play for like nine straight minutes in that period. And I would say, based on how long we were shorthanded there, I would say we did do a pretty good job of shutting them down. So let's keep going. Second period. Pepsi break brought to you by Pepsi. Killed off a penalty, only to get another one immediately, but we killed that one off too, so that's good. It's I really hate how many penalties were taken, and Sebastian Ajo seems to have our number. Oh man, on the power play to end period two, we are down two to one in this game. Gotta say, I'm not loving that. I am not loving that, not even one bit. Alright, so let's jump right into the third period. Come on, boys. Come on, boy. And another penalty, and it's Jacob Slavin. 
Oh, I think we're taking a 2 nothing deficit in this one. And they're on the power play again. It's like, can we start bringing this game back? We're running out of time. We're running out of time. Another penalty. Oh, my God. The referees are playing against us in this game. And it's 4-1. to one. My God. 5-1. Anti Ranta. Tori Krug. Yeah, too little, too late, buddy. Too little, too late, buddy. My goodness. We are getting absolutely spanked here by the Carolina Hurricanes. You know what? Honestly, I blame, the, I blame the referees for that one. Backlund by Ovechkin and Perron. And then later on in the game, it was Tori Krug by Mikhail Granlin and Alex Ovechkin. So Ovechkin's still playing good. But I want to look at penalties. Look at this. By the halfway point of this game, we had taken five penalties. And there was no major penalty. So in the first period, when it seemed like we were shorthanded for like nine straight minutes, we were shorthanded for essentially... What, 9.38 to 16.27. So yeah, we were, we were essentially shorthanded for seven consecutive minutes. And then they got one penalty. So the penalties in this game were eight to one for us. That is a huge problem. Como took four penalties in this game. My God, Como just took four penalties. That is unacceptable. I am sorry. Uh, you know what? Cedric Parry, I'm going to say best lines. They already made the playoffs. Everybody feels good about themselves here. You know what? Uh, roster moves. Can I still call up Patrick McDonald? I don't know that I can. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think so. I don't think he's available anymore. Um, I really, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm almost thinking... Edit lines. That is unacceptable. Blake Como took four penalties in one game. That is kind of ridiculous, you know? Um, who do we have scratched? We got McKegg scratched. So, Greg McKegg. I think Greg McKegg's going to take over for Blake Como. He took four penalties in this game. Now, he, th those are the only four penalties he has in the playoffs, right? So he's not, it's not like his, his discipline is really that. But you know what? We're going to give him one more chance. If he takes another penalty in this next game, I swear to God, man. I swear to God, Blake Como is getting scratched and McKegg is going to be in his place. So this one, we're, we're at home now. We're in Halifax at the YouTube Center. In Halifax, Nova Scotia. We're on the power play early, and we give up a shorthanded goal. My God. And it's a long power play, and we did nothing with it. It's 2-0. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. You know what? 3 to nothing. Oh, every time we get a power play immediately after, it's like Ranta just gave up three goals on six shots. Alex Ovechkin, again, it's like, thanks. You know, that it's great that the effort's there. But you know what, if we're down by like three goals in this one, I'm not even jumping in. Honestly, if we're down by like three, I'm not even, I'm not even like jumping in. Then they're on the power play. It better not have been Blake Como. You know, at the end of this period, I'm going to check and see if it was Blake Como. And if it was, you know, next game four, he's gone. I really, truly feel like, you know, I really, truly feel like, oh yeah, we're down by three. And Corpusalo's in the net. He's probably been in the net since halfway through the first. Ah, uh, you know, I'm not even jumping in on this one, but I am going to very quickly check the penalties. Nate Schmidt took a penalty. Yeah, Aho got a penalty. Svechnikov got a, a cross-checking major. Oh, my God, Nietzsche took a penalty. Nate Schmidt, all right. Go back to goals and... Let's just sim through this one. I didn't want to start doing this crap. Hey, Mikhail Granlin gets one back and Forsling gets it right back on like the next shot. It's like, my God, boy. And another penalty, Blake Coleman. I think Carolina might sweep us, man. But Luff on the fourth line is like, no, you know what? I ain't giving up. I ain't giving up, man. This is the final 10. I think it's too little too late for our Halifax, Halifax Buccaneers. Oh, man. I think we're going down 3-0 in this series right now. And another power play goal in the final minute of the game for Kreider. Again, I'm checking penalties. Who's taking it? Blake Como. Blake Como takes a penalty. Was it a... It was 108. Was it a costly one? Yeah. 
Blake Como caused that empty. You know what? He took four penalties in the last game, and he took a penalty in this game. That's five penalties he's taken. Oh, and oh my God. And Alex Ovechkin is injured. I don't even care. You know what? Head coach replaces player. Man. <laughs> my God. I think this is it, boys. I think this is going to be a real quick one. <laughs> Uh, head coach replaces player. You know what, honestly, I just want this one to be over. We made it to the second round of the playoffs. And, uh, you know what? Good on us for making it to the second round. one nothing. Your first shot of the game goes in on Ranta. Oh, my God. And we're still taking penalties, so. We got a, we got a power play. We didn't go anywhere with it. I think we might get swept by the Canes in this. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, Niederreiter scores to make it 2 nothing, and Pesci scores to make it 3 nothing. It's like, my God, boys, there's no fight. Alex Ovechkin's gone. It's like all the fight is gone. It's 4 nothing in the first period, boys. Get R Ranta is about to be pulled for like the third or fourth straight game, I think. If they score again, I bet you it says Corpusalo. I can almost promise you it'll say Eunice Corpusalo. Oh, my God. We're, are we going to get shut out? Is that what's going on here? I think we're about to get swept in this. Uh, it's 5 nothing. Here we go. Yeah, Corpus Allo in the net. Exactly like I thought. Ranta absolutely did nothing. 6 nothing. Corpus Allo is not... Like, I'm not even putting the blame on Eunice Corpus Allo. Because he's not a starting goalie. He has no poise. He has no playoff experience. It's not his fault that he doesn't play well in the playoffs. He's, he's never had to, you know? So it's not his fault. I'm not mad at him. 7 Seven to frickin' nothing. This is ridiculous. This is gonna be like the quickest playoff round two <laughs> video ever. We're like 10 minutes into this video. It is eight to nothing power play goal. Oh my god. Oh my god. We just got swept in the second round by the Carolina Hurricanes. Let's look at penalties. Bomeister took two penalties in the third. They took three penalties in the second, and we didn't have a single goal. They took three penalties in the second, and they still got two goals on us. In the first, Ryan Dezingle. So Ryan Dezingle had two penalties. Jay Bomeister had two penalties. I think, you know what, the boys had pretty much... The boys had pretty much given up at that point, so... Anyway, yeah, I'm... Well, it's not like I'm going to check and see who scored, right? Anyway, it is April 30th, 2021, and our chances of... Oh, my God. Okay, first off, I want to look at points leaders in the playoffs on our team. I want to see who did well, and I really want to look at Granlund. Yeah, Granlund, I know, he was a minus five, you know? He was a minus five in the playoffs. He did have he did have eight points in nine games. I, I, I mean, he had a fantastic regular season. He was above a point per game. And I want to look at his uh, advanced stats here. I mean, not a big hitter, right? He's not a huge hitter. His face-offs, uh, under 50, but not horrendously under 50, you know? He had 28 power play points, playing over 20 minutes a night. I mean, the guy had more takeaways than giveaways. Look at last year. Look at his takeaways last year. That is ridiculous. But this year was kind of a step down for him in takeaways, but it's like points-wise, he stepped up. Because Mikhail Granlund is eligible for a contract extension, and he's one of the guys that I think I would like to extend. I mean, I think it's very possible that Matt Siemens could become one day. If he, if he was to have a breakout season, I think Matt Siemens could become our top-line center. And he's got, after this, uh, after, after we get to the re-sign phase after this, he'll be eligible for an extension. And you know, because he's a created guy, I'm going to want to hold on to him forever, right? Um, yeah, that's the only one I, I truly wanted to look at was um, Mikhail Granlund. I am really proud of this team because we made it to the playoffs, you know. Um, I think I'm going to see what he wants. Yeah, okay, so he wants eight years. I'm not giving him eight years, you know. <laughs> Mikhail Granlin, dude, I, I don't want you till you're 38, and I'm not paying you 10 mil, close to $10 million a year. So what about... See, he wants the same amount the whole time, right? 
Okay, so I think the longest I would want him signed would be maybe four years. Because after he's 34, you're going to see his speed's going to go. Uh, you know, his, his uh, durability is going to start to go after he hits like 34, 35. That's when he's going to start to drop off the map a little bit on you. So uh, honestly, I think w I'm going to try and get away with uh, I'm gonna see seven or uh, 8.75 for four years. I think that's what I'm going to try and get Mikhail Granlin for. I do not want him for eight years. Um, I don't, I kind of don't even really want to pay him that. He's only 86 overall. He's kind of a bubble top line guy, you know? Um, he does want to stay here though. That's the thing, right? He wants to stay here. And then we got, uh, Dezingle. He wants to stay. Um, wasn't bad in the playoffs. Wasn't amazing, but he wasn't bad. I mean, he had 58 friggin' points for us. And he's another one I want to look at. How much does he think he's worth, right? And Ryan Dezingle wants six years. Again, he's pushing 30. I don't know how much I like that. But he wants almost $5 million a year. But it's like, yeah, dude, you're 30. But the thing with him is he fits everywhere on this team, right? He's a two-way forward. He's great defensively. Doesn't have the greatest wheels, but his passing, his shooting, his poise is good. His durability is great. He's the kind of guy that you do want to stick around on your team. He's making five and three quarters right now, and he wants less than that. He wants under five. So I would rather pay him for, I would say, f he's another one. I'd pay him like four years, and I would offer him like 4.5, maybe even like, yeah, no, 4.5 would be the maximum I would offer Ryan Dezingle. We're going to have a lot of, we're going to have like $30 million in cap space after this season. Ah, I'm sitting here going like, how many of these guys do I really want to keep though? Right? Uh, he's a good shooter. And even though he's a left wing, I could put him on the right because then he's, he's on his one time side, right? Um, you know what? Hmm. I don't know, man. David Perron. I love David Perron. He's kind of my guy, but he's a top, he's a top line guy, right? And he's not really a top line guy. <laughs> he's he's more of a second line forward, but he re only fits on that top line very very well. And he's another one I want to look and see what does he want. He wants six million for three years. I'm gonna have to let Perron go if that's what he wants, man. I'm sorry, but he's got to go. What does Bomi want? Bomi wants two million for two years, but it's like, dude, you're a fossil. I love you, but you're a fossil, dude. All right, so Kasperi Kapanen, uh, what did he do for us this year? He only had two assists in the playoffs, and he was a minus four. But I know for a fact that that's the first round of the playoffs. We did very, very well, and I felt really confident in what, what our guys were doing and everything. It's the regular season. He had 37 points. Uh, it's 11 goals. You know, I know he was with uh, Matt Siemens and Dave Finley, and they pretty much all had between 37 and 47 points. It's not horrible for a third line. It, it just, it's all going to be for me, um, again, what does he want? Okay, two and three quarters. That's not bad. I can live with that for a third liner. Um, I don't know. Jamel Smith, he wants to come back. I like Jamel Smith, super, super solid uh, bottom six guy for us. He had four points in nine games in the playoffs. Only 17 points in the regular season. He's only 5'10", 190. But he's he's got, he doesn't, well, he's not on the ice a lot, you know? That's the thing, right? He really doesn't spend a lot of time on the ice. So he would be the kind of guy I wouldn't mind holding on to. Como's gone. After the playoffs, dude, Como is dead to me. I want nothing to do with Blake Como. Uh, after that, in the system, we got Patrick McDonald, who is absolutely going to make the squad next year. He is absolutely 100% going to make the squad. You know? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And there's even a couple other created guys I wouldn't mind going after. I could even maybe think about trading someone for someone. You know? Anyway, um... Okay, what I'm going to do is go to the calendar and I want to kind of sim, I want to slowly sim ahead because I want to see, um, I'm going to get like just over a week into the future and I'll stop it. Oh, Vetch, can I say best lines again? 
Uh, AHL playoff round complete. We won that as well. So we're still in the playoffs in the minors. Uh, Merrick Hrivik. Merrick Rivik, that's his name. Best lines. Uh, view draft class. We got the new scout rankings. I know this part of the video kind of seems to be a little bit of a write-off right now, right? So we got a lot more info on these guys. Uh, yeah, Matty Lackanen, still the number one draft pick. Trevor Wong, I know he's a real guy. Uh, Aiden House, we got all the info we need. Look at this guy. 112 points in 64 games. Little bit of an increase from last year, right? So this is the guy that we're going to be going for today. Or today, I mean, in this draft, in this year's draft. We're going to be going for Aiden House. Who knows, maybe we can even get Oliver Dupuy as well. He's got that leadership ability, man. He really does. He's only two years out from the NHL. And for, for a guy who's like the number nine pick, you know, that's that's not that bad. All right, so I want to take a look at the... Uh, okay, we're going to go to stats. I want to take a look at the playoff tree and see what happened. I see Toronto and Chicago both got eliminated in the second round as well. So all of our created people were eliminated in the semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the uh, East and West semi uh, semifinals, right? Yeah, semifinals. <clears throat> now we're into the conference finals. <clears throat> My prediction. All right, so Boston took out Florida and they took out Toronto. Now they're up against Carolina, but Carolina was Carolina beat Ottawa, who had Ryan Chisholm and Net. And had a pretty decent team. Ottawa had a pretty good team this year. Carolina had a deadly record. I honestly, you know what? We got beat by the Carolina Hurricanes. I am hoping Carolina takes the cup. Because you know what? That tells me we got beat by the best team in the NHL. Whatever team wins the Stanley Cup is the best team in the NHL. So we're going ahead another week. Oh, here we go. Tied up. Vegas. Vegas. Oh, it's game seven. Both game sevens. Let's see, two days into the future, and it's Boston against Dallas. Wow, all right, so we're going to go to, like, the first, and that should be it. Let's see what happens. It's 3-2 Boston. Could they take the cup? Could they take the cup this year? Boston Bruins take the Stanley Cup, and the Charlotte Checkers take the Calder. So now our salary cap is 90.5, and we're almost at the draft. Uh, we're going to have to do some... Uh, first off, what I want to do is look at our... We'll go to the draft board. So I'm going to go to the draft board and see what we got. We got Columbus's pick, which is... I can guarantee it's going to be a top 10. Right? Ours is probably going to be the... I would say the 20th... Or maybe the 19th. Yeah, because we kind of were lower on the end of... Teams that made the playoffs, I think. We were kind of lower down on that list. So we could have the 19th pick. Or even the 18th pick. And it's possible we could have, like, the number five, number four pick and maybe even package something with that number four, number five pick and we can get Aiden Nose on our team, who's NHL-ready, elite potential, and I think that's going to do some really, really good things for our team. And then Aiden Nose can officially be a Halifax Buccaneer. Right? So, simulate to draft. I don't... I was thinking about signing... Oh, who got what? We got the number seven pick. We went from number five to number seven with our pick. So we got the number seven pick. The Islanders have the number three pick. When it comes to the top three, I think it's pretty much set in stone. Like, if your draft rank is third, you're gonna go third kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, in our next video that we do, we'll do the... Uh, We'll do the draft and maybe the re-sign phase. That'll be in our... We only have four draft picks this year. So with the number seven pick, we could get like Aiden Nouse. Or uh, we could get Oliver Dupuy. Oh, now Aiden Nouse is second, of course. So everything's just got to get harder and harder. <laughs> They're saying he's the next Patrick Kane, though. So that looks pretty good for us, right? Now, did Dupuy change? No, he is still... He is still uh, ninth overall. He's a grinder. He's the kind of guy I want on my team. A grinder. A good um, bottom six grinder. Someone who's going to be on a th the third or fourth line. Consummate penalty killer. That's what I want from him. If he turns out the way I hope he turns out, you know what I think I might do? First, we're going to look at retired players. 
And then in the next video, we're going to do pre-draft interviews. We're going to do all of our little due diligence. And we'll do the draft in the next one. So Spets is retiring. He did get to 1,000 points. Good for you, Jay. Good for you. He got 43 points in his final season with the Edmonton Oilers. Wow, look at that, eh? According to this, he never did go to Toronto, I guess. Never played a game for Toronto. Had 50 points last year. Uh, Ilya Kovalchuk had 51 points for the Ottawa Senators in his final season. Wow, yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, Marion Gabarik, Chris Kunitz, the beauty himself, Chris Kunitz, David Backus, UC Jokinen, Nathan Horton finally retiring. Oh, man, all two brain cells he's got left, eh? I wonder what his durability was. 53 is his durability. <laughs> Poor guy, he's just made of glass. Oh man, Martin Hansel. How did you how did you fall so far? I remember like NHL 15 or NHL 16 on Arizona. He was like the number one center in Arizona. A couple short years later, he's nowhere. Trevor Daly was playing for my very own Burnaby Aces. You know what, buddy? It was a pleasure having you on my team. Let's take a look at his his nice career. Defenseman. Defensive defenseman, I believe, right? No, he's a two-way defender, but um, a guy that grew up and played for the uh, Sioux Greyhounds, was the captain of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. I used to go and watch Greyhounds game with, games uh, with my dad all the time when Trevor Daly was the captain. Man, that's uh, it's pretty wild. Do we have any uh, goalies that are retiring of note? We got Curtis McElhaney. Sixth round pick by the Flames. Good for you, Curtis McElhaney. Hanu Toivinen. Never heard of you. Uh, Jeff Zatkov. Yeah, he's uh, he was a Penguin for a while, right? He played when he when he was up in the NHL. Didn't he play uh, some games in it was Pittsburgh or something? He got he played for. It was an LA Kings draft pick. I feel like it was Pittsburgh. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. Don't quote me on that one. Um, oh, got no options here. Jason Spezza is now a coach. Coach for the Oilers. <laughs> Trevor Daly is now a scout. Maybe we can pick him up. Oh, my God. Okay. With the prompts. Let's go. Holy crap. So, I am going to end. Uh, am I going to end this? Uh, you know what? I'm going to end this video in a second. I'm just going to do the uh, pre-draft interviews really, really quick. Um, is there anybody we want to know any more about? We are probably going to have a pretty late first round pick. I would actually not really be opposed to. No, you know what? I'm going to use the seventh pick, I'm thinking. Yeah, but Carson Lambos. Carson Lambos looks pretty good, and I know what he is. He's got a cannon of a shot. I have seen, I have played games before. You know, I don't even think we really need to do draft day interviews. Daniil Cheka, I know he's, he's, I don't think he's elite. I think he's got top four. Or he might have elite, but doesn't stay that way. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we're gonna, we're not even gonna do draft interviews. We're just gonna try and, I'm gonna try and make a mental plan on what I'm gonna do. And then, uh, I will see you guys next time. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, it's been a slice. Uh, it's, it's been fun. As always, we are now at the draft. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And until next time, everybody have a good one.